What's up, good people? I hope you're doing extremely well. And if not, I hope that we can change that in the coming moments. You're now listening to the Free Spur channel where we talk about health and money and everything in between to help us have the best life possible. And today I want to talk about or today I want to answer a question um, that I received. And that is, is financial freedom possible in America? And um, I wanted to answer this question because I think it was really interesting that we are going through a period or we have been going through a period in time where people have been learning a lot about financial freedom and, um, you know, just even the creation of the notion of financial freedom has, you know, come up a lot in people's minds. Um, and it's one of those things that I think people in learning about it, you know, immediately say, hey, that's something that I want. You know, I want to be able to, you know, conduct my life in a way that I am financially free and move forward in building wealth and all of those things. And a lot of us didn't grow up that way. A lot of people haven't grown up in a world that has been conducive to that. And what I mean by that is that a lot of us grew up in a world of, you know, you work hard, um, you know, go to school, get a good education, work hard, you know, for someone else and, you know, work for a company that is paying you a good salary and, you know, save for retirement, all these things, you know, we learned as kind of the path to um, wealth or or the path to the American dream. So this notion of financial freedom is actually something that's fairly new um, for a lot of people. And um, I wanna break down a couple things that I think people don't really think about or consider um, when they're talking about financial freedom. And um, you know, some things that really kind of get me thinking um, as I started to think about financial freedom and what that meant for me. And that's the thing. I think it has to mean something for you. I think it means something different for everyone. And I think when you think about it that way, you really begin to understand the big picture. I guess first I want to talk about the positives. I want to talk about the things that, you know, people seek when they talk about financial freedom and, you know, the common things that people think and associate with financial freedom. You know, one being, you know, having enough money to cover whatever expenses or lifestyle that you are currently living and um, also having emergency or reserve money to weather any uh, emergencies or storms that might come in your life. I know a lot of people are going through a lot of financial situations um, based on our current in economic situation in America, you know, like job loss. Um, inflation and what have you and those things as we've talked about before are very cyclical you know they're a part of kind of the system that we have adopted to correct itself over time so you know we may have these moments of you know economic prosperity and then you know we'll have these moments of you know economic collapse you know those things are designed in a way to keep the ecosystem of economics going and um, I know for the common person or the common working person those things may be a little hidden and not understood at large um, or a lot before this time I think now with the um, information that is so readily available I think people are beginning to unravel the mystery of, of finance and understand those things um, in a larger scope. But I think the the funny thing about that is, you know, as people begin to um, have more opportunity and understand more, if there isn't a, you know, adjacent or if there isn't an opposing understanding of the human spirit and the human condition, um, you start to get to a point where prosperity doesn't mean anything or doesn't mean the same thing anymore. You start to be excessive and, you know, people who get on that side of the coin don't have a sense of, wait a minute, you know, what am I doing this for? You know, what am I um, living my life for? You know, and that's a, that's a big topic in itself. You know, we won't go too much down that rabbit hole today. Um, because that is a big topic in itself. You know, what are you doing the things that you're doing for? Um, but what I really want to drill down on is, you know, this notion of financial freedom and how it connects the dots between what we've 
learned growing up about money and things like that and, and how we conduct ourselves right now and what we're moving into from a financial uh, from a financial standpoint into the future. And a lot of it does have to do with, you know, our upbringing, you know, what things have we learned? You know, did we grow up in a household that talked about money? Did we grow up, you know, in situations that didn't? And, you know, it was just, hey, you know, go follow the, the system, you know, go get a good education, get a good job and, you know, get out there. And when you don't do that, you know, for most people, when that doesn't happen, when you don't get a good education, when you don't get a good job, you know, what's the alternative? And I think, you know, in that respect and in that regard, there has been a lot of limbo state, you know, for lack of a better term for people in their lives, you know, getting to a point where, hey, here's the here's the goal. Here's the end goal that has been presented to me as, you know, my life quest or, you know, my life purpose in terms of finances. And I didn't measure up to that you know, for whatever reason. So what next? You know, now I just start on this path of, you know, working at the bottom level, trying to claw my way back up to this acceptance in this elite system. And I think for a lot of people that becomes reality and that becomes the cycle. So, you know, with the information age, but with the information age, when people started to really see that, I don't have to do that because of the opportunities that were created with, you know, like like right now with YouTube or with, you know, um, cryptocurrency and all these things that are creating opportunity for people to excel themselves through knowledge, through readily available knowledge, not, you know, uh, systematic um school controlled knowledge, but just, you know, the knowledge that other people offer for free. And I think that has really changed the paradigm of people's thinking. And I think it's really changed people um, into people who have a notion of financial freedom. You know, they have an inkling or, or a sparkle of the possibility of financial freedom. But I think one of the things on the other side that people uh, don't look at or a few of the things that people don't consider when they talk about financial freedom is, you know, what are we really tied to financially in the world? What are the things that are fixed that you can't get around regardless of, you know, what things um, happen to you financially? What are those fixed things? And I think um, a couple of those major things are um, property taxes and just taxation, period. And, you know, I think people don't understand that even if you right now have a million dollars and go buy a million dollar house, you know, cash, you know, OK, I, I buy a million dollar house. You know, my housing is taken care of for the rest of my life. No, it doesn't work that way because on that million dollar house, you're still going to pay property taxes. So in that regard, you never actually own anything. <laughs> I think once people really get to that point of understanding that there's always taxation, there's always a um, mechanism that is, especially in America, there's always a mechanism that is going to dictate your financial situation in terms of what you're going to have to spend to live. So I think you have to understand it from that perspective first that, OK, there's always this hidden cost that can be determined by the governing um, body of, of America. You know, there's always this hidden cost that can and be uh, placed upon me at any given time. So regardless of if I have, you know, one hundred dollars in my bank account or one hundred thousand dollars in my bank account, I'm still going to be taxed based on my living arrangement or my living situation. Um, and, you know, and just, you know, food and all those things that you have to provide for yourself. Those things are the costs of life. You know, um, I was joking with someone on the, the other day and we were talking about the costs of life. And you were talking about the things that sustain us. And, you know, from a basic natural perspective, you know, what if you could 
grow and, you know, create your own food? You know, what if you didn't have um, housing that was beholden to, you know, taxes and all these things? And what if you were what if we were self-sustainable um, and, you know, and not taking anything away from, you know, our current uh, ecosystems that we live in, because I think there are a lot of a lot of great things that, you know, are a part of that. A lot of things that we are afforded as, you know, human beings living in whatever society, um, you know, there is a camaraderie there of skills and um, and other things that really, you know, do make our lives better. But I wanted to get to the point of, you know, just the bare necessities, the bare essentials what if you have control of those things what if we had control over those things that we are fixed and tied to that sustain us um and i think life becomes a very interesting place when you do have control over those things i think you start to really unravel the mysteries of you know your mind and your purpose and you have time to do that when you are not caught in a cycle of really anxiety about, you know, how am I going to sustain myself, my family, uh, my community? You know, what are the sustaining forces that govern those things? And I think at large, and I think we all know at large right now, that's money. You know, money is the the glue in between all of those cracks. Um, and we use money to leverage all of those things you know we use money for food we use money for housing um money is you know the thing that we seek because we need to acquire those things but i think where we misstep a lot of times is we have this ideal of the level that we have to acquire of those things And we're constantly fed that level through every facet of life. You know, we're constantly chasing this notion, this dream of, you know, it has to look like this. It has to sound like this. It has to be, you know, in this particular um, setting. And um, sometimes that setting that we're creating for our lives really has no value for us individually. And um, a lot of times it takes so much time to get to the place of realizing that, that, you know, lives are spent, you know, complete lives are spent chasing something that is really not the thing that is going to fulfill you. So I really want to talk about, you know, how do we get past that point and really achieve true financial freedom and true freedom period in our lives and true and true freedom period in our lives you know what is it that really gets us to that point of freedom and i think you have to start with the small things the small understandings of life in its purest most natural form you know you can look at nature you can go out into nature and look at the smallest things and understand life completely it's so amazingly true when you do it Um, Because I think we get caught up in the complexities of the construct lives that we create, you know, or that we're living in that someone else has created. And um, we lose the notion of the simple. We lose the notion of the completeness of nature and how the ecosystems of our lives work. Um, Funny thing, my wife had me watching this show and I rarely watch TV. I rarely watch TV, but I was spending some time. Um, with my wife and she was like oh I want you to watch this show alone and um, I don't know if you've seen this show but basically it's where they send a group of people to a place in the wilderness or in the wild and they have to survive on nothing I mean they don't have nothing they have you know a few things a few items but it's a survivalist kind of thing and you know we were watching it and it was so profound in that the simple things that we take for granted, like food, um, water and shelter, you know, the things that we are provided based on how much money we make, those simple, simple things when they're not, when they're not governed by money, 
becomes so difficult to achieve and maintain if you're not prepared for that environment. And um, it was so profound to me because I think, you know, we have gotten so far away from the basics of what we need and given that power away that we a lot of times don't understand um, the simplicity of things. And that was one of the things that was profound. It's like, you know, every person or participant in, you know, this alone journey, they go through their cathartic moment of understanding, wow, I really appreciate what I have. I really appreciate, you know, my family. I really appreciate the life that I have because I'm in a situation where I'm I'm hunting for food. I'm in a situation where, you know, my shelter, uh, there are wild animals trying to eat me or whatever, you know, and I'm I can't control those things um, because I don't either have, you know, the knowledge or the time. And it's one of those things where once you get to that understanding and you understand how far we've come in terms of those things, you know, being able to sustain yourself through the mechanisms that are presented and not having to do a lot of the hunting and gathering and, you know, survival um, of the wild. Once you realize that and start to really just grasp how we can understand or we can appreciate the beauty of nature without being succumbed to it. You really get a big picture of how great life is and how we create problems for ourselves. You know, we create problems for ourselves a lot in, you know, our current world because we have been removed from a lot of the things that would be natural problems, natural problems. There are some natural problems and natural things that you have to solve in life. Food, shelter, safety. And when you're not solving those things, freedom becomes something that you chase and not that you understand. We have to understand that freedom is ours. It's in your grasp. You are free every day that you can get up and eat and be safe and be clothed. You're free every day that you can do that and every day that you can understand that you have the power. And I want to get to this in a moment. I want to get to, you know, the, the things, the actions that we can take to get to that place of power in our lives. But when you understand that you have the power to do those things, you have the power. It's at your fingertips. You have the power. It's more readily available than you being placed in the wild where you don't have the power to change your situation if you don't understand the wild. And that's the thing that is very important um, and the point that I want to make. You need to understand what wild you are in. If you are in the wild of education, you need to understand that wild. If you are in the wild of, you know, a job, you need to understand that wild. If you are in the wild of whatever it is in your life it could be relationships it can be you know a business understand the wild you're in because you have to master that wilderness you have to master that and whatever it takes to master that you need to understand those things um and it's a process i think you know one of the things that really struck out to me and i'm going to get to the other point that i wanted to make right here but one of the things that really struck out to me while i was watching and consuming that is that we don't understand what it takes or we don't participate in what it takes when we don't understand the ramifications of not participating in what it takes. And I think that really goes to the heart of why people don't feel free because they don't understand the alternative until they get into that situation where, oh, wait a minute, I would, somebody told me that I was going to be, you know, behind on my bills if I did this. Somebody told me that I was going to be, you know, at a disadvantage if I did this. Somebody told me that I was going to be caught up in the legal system if I did this. You know, you have to be able to understand 
again, the wilderness that you're in and prepare and have the skills to weather and navigate that wilderness. So that's what I learned from that. And I think piggybacking off of that, I wanted to talk about the things that are plausible and doable and the things that we must do to achieve financial freedom. Earlier, I mentioned the notion of always being taxed. One of the things you have to understand to have financial freedom is how you're being taxed. The tax codes, you have to understand taxation and how to navigate that. I think one of the most powerful things that the wealthy do and that they teach the people that they love is how to navigate taxes. And I think um, even before you understand making more money and all of those things, I think you have to understand the overarching thing that is going to always be there. You know, the old saying, there's two permanent things, death and taxes. And I, I think it becomes so much more clear and ironic when you start to go down a path of, hey, I want to do something more financially with my life so that I can be set up to, you know, have a better life or at least pass something on to whoever I care about. And I think, you know, we have to understand that taxation is a huge part of wealth and legacy. Taxation is a huge part of, you know, you being able to sustain yourself when you can't work anymore because you can have, you know, abundance of money. Most people work for retirement. You know, they go and spend years on a job. They trade a lot of their time for money. And once they retire, they start to draw from that money. And if that money can't sustain them through the years that they have left, because things become, some things do become more expensive, like healthcare and all those things. You know, all these mechanisms that start to take money and things away from you, if you can't sustain yourself through those times, then you end up losing your right back at square A, where you were before you spent all of that time and years working for someone else to acquire what you think is something that's going to be sustainable. I think the key to avoiding that is to create what I like to call in sustainable revenue engines and lasting things that pay you regardless of you working or not. Um, I had the privilege in my younger years to be a music producer and um, you know, I didn't understand the impact financially. I didn't understand the importance of the decisions that I made creatively and, you know, business wise when I was younger, um, because I was strictly against signing publishing deals. I was strictly against giving away the rights to what I was um, working on or creating, you know, and it, it hurt me in my younger years because I was shunned from a lot of deals and things, um, even though I was in the crowd, you know, I was in a major record deal. I was in major record contracts because I wasn't giving away the piece that they wanted. I was kind of ostracized from some things, but you know, long story short, I, I was, I'm so glad that I learned through time that the most powerful thing that I could hold on to was the rights to the things that I created because now I get paid more from those things than I did when I created them because it's residual it keeps going it's 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 infinite you keep receiving gratuities over time for something that you created years ago and I say that not to brag or to you know go down that path but I say that so that you understand it's all about creating things that create infinite wealth without working because you're going to get to the point where we all do, you know, where working is not a possibility or it's not something that you want to do. You know, we all get to the point where I don't want to work anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to, you know, I don't have the energy or, you know, the time to give to someone um, in exchange for money. 
So when that when that shifts and it will for everyone, it's better to be on the side of things where it's the reverse. I'm buying time back from the things that I've already done and it's happening without me having to work at it. It just happens. So music is one that I think is a good one that does that. Um, but I think what we have to understand going forward, if we are talking about financial freedom, is that we have to master the things that save us from taxation and we have to master the things that create abundance without effort. And never before has that been something that has been so attainable for so many people. And so to answer the question, you know, is financial freedom possible in America? I think it is. I think it doesn't take on the form that people think it does. And I think the what the future holds is more questions. And I think the mystery about that that we have to unravel is what does financial freedom mean for you? What are you trying to to attain? What are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to buy 10 years of your life back when you retire? Or are you trying to live a lavish lifestyle right now? It really depends on you answering those questions for yourself. You know, what what do those things mean for you? And I think once you start to think about it that way and you start to have those epiphanies that I did when I was watching alone with my wife and understand the simple things in life, the simple connections we have to nature and the people we love and the moments that we can share in the present. When you understand the gravity and the importance of those things and indulge in them, let them be real in your life and in those moments. When you understand that, you become forever free. I hope this has been extremely helpful for someone. And until we talk again, I wish you health, wealth and freedom.